Good morning, it's Leah from Made Matchless. And I rolled out of bed today and I was doing my quiet time. And I just wanted to share uh, something with you that I feel is just very, very important right now for us as moms. If we are believers, it is so important for us to be accurately thinking rightly about God's word, about what God's word says about the heart of God, about the character of God. And it's been in my heart recently very strongly that what we consume on a daily basis, especially on social media and Instagram, even people who claim to be Christians, what we consume from other people, we must be discerning to filter truth from falsehoods, from true teaching about God's word to false teaching about God's word. I see a lot of really interesting things out there, especially on Instagram. I, I don't know if you know this, but on Instagram, you can actually follow certain hashtags. And so what Made Mattress is about has a lot to do with Christian moms. And so I decided to follow the hashtag Christian moms. And what happens then when you follow a hashtag is you see posts from all sorts of people all over Instagram that use that hashtag, whether you follow that person or not. And I see some of the most interesting, unbiblical things that people are putting out there with the hashtag Christian moms. And that being said, I've been in conjunction with a lot of studying that I've been doing. I just really felt that it's important to encourage you and exhort you as a mom to make sure that you are discerning the word of God rightly. There is a verse in 2 Timothy, and it's 2 Timothy 2, 15, and it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. That's not just for Timothy. This is a letter that Paul wrote to Timothy and that is not just for Timothy, that is for every single believer. We need to rightly handle the word of truth. But there is so much junk out there. There's so much stuff that goes contrary to God's word under the hashtag, so to speak, of Christian moms or Christianity or God's word or whatever. And so that being said, I just want to give you a little bit of insight on how you as a mom can rightly handle the word of truth. It is so important. It's important for you and your walk so that you're not being deceived. And it's also important um, for your daughter because as you learn what God's word is saying and you're passing it on to her, you're also going to be teaching her how to rightly handle the word of God so that she's not going to be deceived. All right, you are impacting generations by just rightly handling the word of God. Okay, and so there are two ways that you can handle the word of God, okay? There is what's called exegesis and there's something called eisegesis. Now, whether you've heard those words or not, they're big words, right? What on earth do those mean? <clears throat> so exegesis is when you start, okay, with the known big picture, all right, of reality of God's word and what it actually means, the big picture of God's word, right? The big picture is the gospel it's God sending his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to save us from our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to bring us in right relationship with him. All right, he sacrificed his son for us so that we can be in right relationship with him and bring him glory through our lives. And that's the big picture going on, that God is gonna be glorified through his son and he is going to reign forever and ever and get the glory. Okay, big picture. So with exegesis, you start with that known big picture in mind. And then what you do is you draw like little bits of information and you, um, you draw conclusions from that truth. All right, you start with the big picture of truth and then you draw conclusions from that. Now, the opposite of that, which we see tons of, all right, in this world, in false teaching, everything is eisegesis. 
So what eisegesis is, it kind of does the flip of that, okay? So what eisegesis does is it starts with little bits and little ideas and little, ooh, this is, this is what I'm interested in, this is what I like, and this is what I want God to be like. And what it does is it starts with these little bits of information, these preconceived notions of what you want God to be like, what you want scripture to say, what you want, what you want, what you want. And it's starting with, with what? It's starting with self, okay? And our ideas and our imagination. And what it then does is it goes in reverse. It says, okay, now I'm gonna go into the Bible and I'm going to try to find things that are going to match up with my view. And then I'm going to present that as truth. And I'm gonna apply that to my life in this way. That's what I'm going to do. And so that is what you see a lot of. And here's, here's the problem with that, right? The first one starts with God in mind, God's word as being the ultimate. That's where we start. I said Jesus starts with my mind first and what I want it to say and works backward to make what, it, what makes God's word match with my mind instead of making my mind match with God's word. Okay, and so it's, it's flip-flop. Now, the reason eisegesis is so popular, I guess you could say it's popular, and it's so effective, is because a preacher or a teacher, whoever, that uses eisegesis, right, which is the wrong way to use God's word, the reason it's so effective with people is because a preacher or teacher can look at their audience and say, hmm, I wonder what my audience wants to hear. I wonder what they want to hear and what's going to get the most likes or get the most shares or what's gonna bring people into my following more, gonna make um, me bigger. I wonder what they're going to want to hear that's going to get more people to agree with me, all right? Or maybe their intention is really good, but what they're really asking is, how can I make the gospel more appealing to more people? And that's equally wrong and dangerous. And then they identify what that idea is, then they find scripture to support it. And what you're doing is you're tickling the ears of people, you're making people like, ooh, yeah, that sounds good, that sounds good. And it's so easy to figure out what your audience wants to hear. And then just, you can make this say whatever you want it to say. And then use the hashtag Christian moms or the hashtag Christianity or whatever, you know, God's word, whatever the hashtag is that you want it to say. You can make this say whatever you want. You can pull scripture out of anywhere in here and make it say what you want. And that's the danger of eisegesis. You can make God's word say whatever you want it to say and lead people astray. And I know as somebody, who teaches, teaches young girls, teaches girls, young minds, as somebody who writes, as somebody who puts together resources, I have to be so careful not to make this say what it doesn't say. And it's tempting. It's tempting to take an idea and like try to make God's word say what you want it to mean. But what we must do first, and this is not just for teachers, this is for you moms, Moms, what you must do is you must ask yourself anytime you're consuming somebody else's ideas, even my own, if, if, or your pastors or your churches or whatever, anytime you're consuming from someone else and you're receiving supposedly God's word and um, teaching from someone else, you need to ask yourself if this is done with exegesis in mind or eisegesis in mind. Is this taking an idea that sounds really appealing and making God's word fit it somehow? Or is it taking the big picture of God's word and drawing information from that? Or we must be discerning about that. We have to. And really the only way to do that, and this is this is why it's, it's easy to do eisegesis versus exegesis, and this is why it's so easy just to consume whatever, is because exegesis takes some time. It takes a little effort. It takes some, some thinking a little bit. All right, and, and too many of us are like, I don't have the time for that. And so we just consume whatever comes in front of our eyes and think, oh, that's cool. And well, it says hashtag Christian mom, so it must be true. Which it's from this teacher that I know has taught really good things in the past, so it must be true. No, I, I, I've seen so many leaders, so many leaders, um, even in, in my personal life that have just fallen away from what's true 
because they're getting swept up in the eisegesis of, of other people, making God's word say what it doesn't really say to fit the culture, to fit the times, to fit what's popular, to fit what we want it to mean, right? You've probably seen it too, but it's getting sneakier and sneakier because people are twisting God's word to make it say what it's not really saying. And like I said, you can make this say whatever you want it to say, but that's not our job. It says here in 2 Timothy that do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. That's you and me. All right, we're going to be held accountable for what we believe. We're, we're not going to be able to say, but my pastor taught this, but Leah taught this, but so-and-so taught this. We're going to be held responsible for what we believe. All right, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. That's going to take a little bit of effort. And I exhort you, moms, do a little bit of research. And the way that you become somebody who is practicing exegesis right, is you, you do some things, you do a little bit of thinking, you look at the context, right? When I was even pulling up 2 Timothy 2.15, um, my Bible actually has a reference in the back for little introductions to these books of the Bible. I had to look up what, what 2 Timothy was even all about, all right? And it said that Paul was writing this letter as he waited execution, like, hmm, that's interesting. Despite all that Paul was facing, death, the end of his ministry, abandonment by most of his friends for fear of persecution, he faithfully directed his spiritual son Timothy to the hope that's in Christ, as he exhorted Timothy to boldness, endurance, and faithfulness in the face of false teaching. Paul showed his customary concern for sound doctrine. All right, so I wasn't just pulling this out of nowhere. This is about sound doctrine. This is about exhorting us, right, in the face of false teaching, which is, which is what I'm exhorting you to as well. All right, moms, this is not too much for us to do. It cannot be, we cannot depend on other people and just presume they're smarter than us, all right, to, to learn for us so that we can just consume. We need to get into God's word for ourselves. I cannot stress it enough. I, there, you will never stop learning from this book. I promise you, it is, when you dig into it, it's like treasure upon treasure upon treasure. You will never stop learning the, the treasures of truth from this book, all right? Because it is the inspired word of God. And everything in this book points to the big picture of the gospel. We cannot cherry pick and find little things, little nuggets of things to make it fit our lives, all right? That's what false teachers do. And they're doing it really well and people are being deceived and thankfully God is snatching people out of there and opening the eyes of a lot of people and I hope that that just watching this video that your eyes are starting to be opened about the importance of being a, a woman a mom who is digging in for herself who's learning for herself who's looking at the context of this who's asking herself why is Paul writing this to, to Timothy. I thought Timothy wrote this. It says 2 Timothy, like even little things like that. Paul wrote it just because it's called 2 Timothy doesn't mean Timothy wrote it. So understanding who the author is, understanding the time, understanding why he's writing this to this particular person, um, looking up what the words mean, all right? And, and in that time, there are so many resources out there. If you want a list of resources, I'm going to list some of my preferred resources that you can get for yourself to help you become a person who is rightly handling the word of God. Friends, it is so, so important, not just for you, all right? Not just for you, for your daughters, okay? Because they are heading into a world that is dangerous and that wants to take the seed of God's word and snatch it from their hearts, all right? But moms, ultimately, that's up to God and the Holy Spirit to do a work in your daughter and to change her heart and to open her eyes to the gospel. We can only do so much, right? But what we do, we must be faithful with. And so I exhort you, get into God's word, all right? Rightly handle the word of God. Don't listen to those teachers that, that practice eisegesis, that pra practice inductive reasoning, that make God's word be what they want it to be. All right, we must reject that openly. We must be very firm about that. We must not be just consumers of what other people have said, even if they've been saying it for years and years and years and they've been faithful for years or it sounds right. No, as we get into God's word and we read God's word and we get familiar with what it says and the big picture and who God is, then we will become discerning about those things. We'll be able to say, hmm, there's something about that that's not quite right. 
why is that? And we can dig and be like, ah, oh, that's why. Because what they're really saying is this, because what that teacher's really saying is this, and they're not using exegesis. Thank you so much for watching. I wasn't even expecting to talk to you about this today, but I really, really hope that you take this into your heart and you receive it and that you, you dig in for yourselves, not just for you, but for the sake of your daughters. Take care and remember, you were made matchless. Bye. Thank you.